we are going to be doing one of my really favorite stitches, the Russian Spiral. So this one is using 4mm pearls and 4mm crystals. I love it. I really do love it. Um, I made, I think, four or five different versions of Russian Spiral now. And each time I go back, use slightly different beads. And it just really gives you a slightly different texture as well. At the end of the video, if I, if you got time, I can go and grab the, um, bless you, Simon, the materials. I'll actually, Simon, if you dare, can you pass me out the tray from the cupboard with the Russian, for, Russian spiral samples? And I can show you all the different variations we have done over the... Um, over a couple of years now I, I really do love it so how is everybody this morning uh, the weather is so bleak here and it's so cold outside I just like feel like winter is biting back and we're not going to we haven't got any um no sunshine today overcast <laughs> snow Simon said it might snow but we can go on we can have a we can go and have a snowball fight, so that's all right then. I've I've got snow gear somewhere in the house. I have uh, I have packed everything away, but um, I can get it back out again quite quickly. So let me just pop you down to the mat, and then we can just turn it. Turn that down a little bit. Then we can get started making. Um, good morning, Dean, Sarah, Camille, Francis, Alicia, Joe, Lucy, Jen, Charlotte. Oh my, there's so many of you lovelies are here already. Right, okay, so I'm going to turn you down. I'm going to show you the samples very, very quickly and take you to the website. I need to tell you about the vouchers we're running on the website this weekend and it's finishing today. So you might want to go and take advantage of that one. So without further ado, let's go down to the table. There we go. So these are our lovely samples. I'm going to give you a little bit more light on my ring light here. So it comes up a bit brighter. That's better. So you can see it better. Oh, Simon is saying it's snowing. Ooh, exciting. You know, you know me and snow. If the snow settles an inch or two, then that will be it. Live will be shut down. I will be out there playing snowboards with the kids. <laughs> Sounds like Simon has a cold. Um, we've been sneezing and like I got a sore throat to be honest and I have had it for a couple of days and it's getting a bit like it hurts more and more so I got that's why I got like a top all the way on my neck today and I'm going to be wearing a scarf as well just to keep my throat nice and warm and I'm drinking a plenty of honey and lemon tea so hopefully that will go for tomorrow but uh, I think Oh, oh, it's really snowing now. I think I'm going to put the uh, after live this afternoon. I need to make some samples for the Wednesday TV show anyway. So I'm just going to put the um, fire on in the lounge and go and have a play there. Sit there in nice and warm. Right, okay. Sarah is asking, are these <laughs> to make for a beginner? Absolutely. And I'm going to show you step by step how easy it is to make this stitch absolutely beginners um you can do it not a problem at all it's just all and you can do all sorts of different variations as well right so we got we got eight different colorways i i like i can't really choose which one is my favorite <laughs> i really love this wine color i really really do love it i love this pink because it's a little bit more rosy pink i love the purple this tanzanite purple i do love the i called it navy because there is like blues and grays in there but it's more like the pearls are blues i love that one as well <laughs> Uh, obviously I love the teal, it is one of my favourites, I love the aqua, I love the coffee as well, by the way I got all of these here on my mat so I can, um, what's happening here, I can um, demo with any of them so do let me know which colour is your favourite and I'm going to be demoing with that colour as well and the olive as well, I'm not a green person but I do love olive and I do love this, this colour as well. Um, Lucy's saying she loves all the colors. Yes, I, I love all of them as well. So let me know which one you want me to demo. I'm very quickly going to pop you to the website and I'm going to show you all the different ones on there and I'm going to tell you about the vouchers we are running. Let Just give me one sec. Let me just move this window over here. There we go. Um, 
I just realized my lights are not on. <laughs> so let me just turn these lights on. That's it. That's better. There we go. So, right, popping over to the website. So by now, you know the drill. <laughs> you go on the... You go onto the website and it will be in either categories and you go down to... Hold on one sec. Let me just move this window out of the way. Categories, video tutorials, and you go into today's one. There we go, Russian Spiral 2. And then we have got the lovely um, kits in there. Now, they are showing $14.99, but we are running an offer at the moment on our website. So if you spend up until £30, you need to put the code free in there and you get some free beads. If you spend above 40, 30 pounds you get 10 percent off by putting free 10 in the the code at the um, checkout and if you spend over 60 pounds you get 20 percent off so <laughs> and you have to put free 60 in the um the code word in there i i um do you have a look which one you want so one necklace one one kit is going to make you more than one you're going to make your necklace and a bracelet as well so it's it comes with two clasps it comes with two strands of pearls a strand of crystals and 20 grams of seed beads all you need to make well you can make two bracelets but you will make a necklace and a bracelet as well so that's it very quickly i'm coming back to you and we're going to go down so what was the color <laughs> i'm just going to quickly check back what was the color you all like so coffee please give me this thing pink on the left coffee coffee um i think olive is my favorite i think coffee is winning sorry do you see pink shows the best um claire is saying pink there's three for the pink three for the coffee I'm just uh, happy with any color. Charlotte is saying, God bless you. <laughs> just like me, pink. Everybody's saying pink. So I'm, are we going to have to go pink? Pink, I think it's got like five. And coffee, we had three. I need some sort of poll here. The olive, <laughs> Edward is saying coffee. Karen is saying, um, oh no, coffee is coming back. Coffee is coming back. Definitely more of you saying coffee, coffee, coffee. Oh, I think it's going to have to be. Sorry, Judy said pink. Sheila is saying coffee, or oh, they are they are very much head to head, but I think it's gonna have to be coffee. And right, okay, I love this color anyway. So let's pop this off, and I'm gonna get my materials out. Right, the way how we're gonna start is the way then you can continue. You can continue your bead waving the other way. So. Two, two strands of pearls of each one of the colors. So you get four strands of pearls in total. You get two strands of crystals in total and 20 gram of seed beads in the kit and two clasps. Thread and needle is optional, so you can add that onto it. And I'm just gonna cut one of these strings down so I have all the beads in front of me. Now you can make the stitch just with one one color or just cross just crystals just pearls just one color of um of beads there i love mixing the color and i love mixing the pearls and the crystals because the stitch itself naturally spirals around and you get this really lovely this fantastic if like twisted effect with them let me just bring it up you get this really lovely fantastic twisted effect and if you made it all in one color, obviously each one of these rows would be one color or would be one pearl. It would look fantastic as well. It would look great. But I love doing the three together because it just gives you a slightly more sophisticated look, I guess. That's the uh, that's probably not the right word, but that's what I was looking for. And I'm going to give you a very quick tip here. If you are matching your own colors... Take your pearls and crystals or whatever you would like to use and wrap it around your finger just like that. This is often how I choose my colors because when you, and I'm going to put the bracelet next door to it, can you see pretty much that's the colors I'm seeing and that's how I would be seeing when I made my stitch up. So when I want to check something very quickly that has it going to look like when I made it up, I just wrap the strands around my finger and then I can see that how is, I can, Im I can imagine it better, how is it going to turn out. 
right just cutting some of the brown as well so i like to prepare my materials so i put everything on my mat i cut the, some of the strings down take some beads off and i'm just having it on the mat now the mat i use this is just like a fleecy material but um you can use a bead mat you can use all sorts of different materials why is it great because it stops the beads rolling around and i'm going to just thread my needle it, it stops them running away and i'm not going to be picking up the beads one by one what i'm going to be doing is like poking at them with the needle let me just grab a needle and very quickly i am going to thread my me needle there we go. And I'm going to pull this through. Right, I'm going to leave my bobbin on. Because of the nature of this stitch, I can go around and I can actually do like do the bead beading to towards the other end as well so when i'm making a bracelet i can pretty much make it with one piece of thread because if i start somewhere in the middle i'm going to bead into one direction and then when i only have maybe about a feet left or like you know 10 inches of thread left then i go ahead and add the class and then i start my beading to the other way and in this way well you are saving time because you are don't have to um, thread in another thread but in the same time you are um, you are like making sure because like the weakest point in any necklace or any bracelet is always the point where you're joining a new thread right so we're going to start with the following pattern so I'm going to pick up three seed beads it doesn't matter how what why I'm going to pick up these or what what you know Order, I'm going to pick them up so I'm going to pick up a pearl then I'm going to pick up another six seed bead I'm going to pick up another pearl I'm going to pick up another six seed beads four five six and I'm going to pick up my crystal I'm going to take these all the way down oh, and <laughs> Adeline is saying good morning nearly missed it oh bless you you are here now Oh, Lucy saying something in Milton Keys as well. Like, you were saying here, or you stop now. But you know, if the snow settles, that's me. I'm shutting the light down and I'm running out and playing with the kids. Right. I'm going to go through all of these beads once more again to form a nice little circle. I'm not going to knot my thread and needle together, or my tail and thread together, because I don't want the knot to seep into. And I'm going to zoom in more as well so you can see it better. Um, is one strand of beads enough to make a bracelet? Yes, absolutely. So the kit comes with two. And in fact, you only need about two thirds of a strand to make a bracelet. So the kit comes with two strands of each color. So you can make a bracelet and a necklace as well. Right, zooming right in. So I'm just going to go around all of these beads. To have a nice firm circle just like that and once I got around I'm gonna come through the first three beads once again and I'm just stop just before that pearl now when I start, like it's crucial to hold on to and hold it tight. I like to wrap the tail end on my index finger here so I can suspend it in the in the air. But I'm going to show you a couple of other ways how to hold it to keep your beadwork tight. So from here, I'm going to go. I know which pearl I need to pick up because it's right in front of me. I'm going to go and pick up three seed beads. And I'm going to keep pick up the pearl, which is right in front of my thread i'm gonna miss in reverse what i just picked up so i'm gonna miss miss the pearl i'm gonna miss the three seed beads and i'm gonna go through the next three just before the next pearl and i pull this up nice and tight now at this point uh for the very first row i like to keep my beadwork flat so i'm just 
kind of holding on with my thumb and on this is on my top of my index finger i'm just holding it down i don't want this little loop i created here to flip flap around so i want to keep it to the outer edge and i want to keep it flat and now i'm going to repeat this again but with a different pearl so i'm going to picking up three seed beads i'm going to pick up the lighter pearl and i know i need the lighter pearl because that's right in front of my thread here i'm going to miss in reverse while i picked up so i'm missing the pearl i'm missing three seed beads and i'm going to go through the next three and pull this through nice and tight and again i am going to keep this nice and flat so i don't want this loop to flap about at all and i'm going to go once more again i'm going to go picking up three seed beads this time i'm going to pick up the crystal i'm going to miss in reverse the crystal and the three seed beads and i'm going to go to the next three and as you can see these three seed beads now is the seed beads the first loop we ever added there we go So once you go through that first loop, can you see this, this loop what we just created? It sort of starts to sit on the top of our little circle, but still keep it nice and tight. So you're not letting the thread to travel backwards and keep it um, in front of you. So I'm going to go again and I'm going to pick up three seed beads every single time. You're picking up three seed beads and you're picking up the bead, which is right in front of you missing what i picked up in reverse and then i'm going to go through the next three and pull this up nice and tight just like that and let's hold on to it nice and tight there we go and i'm again i'm picking up three seed beads i'm gonna pick up the lighter pearl and go up just in front of those crystals so I've gone around a second time and now it's starting to become more of a tubular shape. So another way to hold your Russian spiral. Just turn this color down a little bit. Another way to hold the Russian spiral is by holding the working thread between your index finger and thumb. And I pull it up just like that. And I'm holding it there right at the point where I am. I'm, I'm traveling this way. So, and again, if you're left-handed or right-handed, it doesn't matter. You can do it the other way all the time. You don't have to. Sorry, Kitty, can you place wording in top of right corner? Hold on, lovelies. What's, there is something, what's going on? No. Can you see me? Can you can you see me very? Uh, can you see me? I'm listening. So we could, can you place the wording in top right hand corner? Can I see what you are doing? What sort of wording um, are you meaning? The subtitles? That's not. That's not. If you turn the subtitles on, on your device, that's not something what. Um, what I can change so that's that's you have to press on the t the three dots at the top I think it's in this corner just above the video and then you can change um where the display I'm, I'll try I'll come up a little bit here so even if you have the words down at the bottom here you can see what I'm doing how, how about that Cheryl let me know if that's uh that's what you're seeing so I'm back to the beginning. I'm holding tight onto my thread and I'm just going to keep on going each time, picking up three seed beads and pick up the bead which is right in front of me, missing in reverse what I just picked up and go through the next three seed beads. And I'm still holding it tight until I'm ready to let that go and pull my thread tight again. So this could be another way for you to hold your beadwork. um tina is saying is the words at the bottom the translation <laughs> we can't turn off i have tried i'm sure there is 
Maybe, maybe Facebook updated. I, I will have to have a look. But if somebody else figured the ad, because Facebook does updates all the time. So maybe this time they change things and you're unable to do it. I'm not sure. But if somebody figures out, let us know. And then we can let everybody else know. I'm just going to go round and round and do the same thing all the way up each time holding it onto it nice and tight. So this is a way to hold on to. Now, if you are having trouble to start it again, if you are having trouble to do the stitch and you, you're having trouble to hold on to it, the other thing what you can do, and I meant to pick up one of my crochet hooks. What have I got here? What have I got here? We can, I've got a pencil. So the one of Christopher's pencils, so <laughs> don't, don't look at it too much. The other thing what you can do is to insert your beadwork into a pencil or a crochet hook or anything, anything circle, but it has to be thin enough so the beads are going to go around it. And you can do your beadwork on there as well. So with, if I do it that way, and I'm just going to have to hold it up, if I do it that way, can you see I'm going to go round and round and round around the pencil? It just makes it life easier until you get, I guess, going, until you have an inch or so beadwork, you can hold on to it freehandly by yourself. But this is the beauty of Russian spiral stitch that uh, you can, because it's tubular, that you can be the round things and there we go i'm going to take this pencil out because i actually like it just to hold it freehand oh charlotte is saying i am so pleased you are doing this stitch kitty and she sent 500 stars charlotte thank you so much for for the stars it's really really appreciated right and i'm picking up again i'm missing in reverse this is my one of my ultimate favorite stitches because it's so repetitive, it's so easy to do. And even if I, if, if the doorbell rung and I, I put this down and I had to walk away, I can come back and I know what I need to do. I need to pick up three seed beads and I need to pick up the bead, which is right in front of me, which is in this case is a crystal bead. I'm just going to pick up that and go to the next. And once you have an inch or so or have something to hold on to, and I'm going to show you sideways just, oh, actually I can show you sideways now. Can you see that some of the beads are starting to sort of stick up a little bit? And it sort of shows, shows itself, the stitch shows itself where you have to go through because you're going through the three seed beads which are slightly sticking to the top. So you make, it's sort of leads itself to pick up those beads and go through those beads as well. So it becomes really easy. There is different version of it. And at the end of the video, I'll show you some other versions we have done over the years. Some of them, like they're all the same stitch, but you will see they look so many different just by using different beads. The stitch is exactly the same. You ha do have to make amendments so like for example if i was using smaller beads i would probably have to pick up just two seed beads not three if i'm you know bugle beads that's one of my favorites as well to use it with this stitch it looks so so effective i'm just going through there i'm just going to do a few more rounds and then I'm going to show you how to add the class wanted because that that's in self is so easy as well. I'm only saying find the three dots on the on the top right, tap on them, and you will get a menu with close captions on it. Tap on that to put them off. It took me a while to to find them on my Kindle, but the dots only there when I tap on the screen center of the video. So I hope <laughs> that helps you out, Cheryl. Oh, Julie sent some stars as well. Julie, thank you so much for the stars as well. I'm um, tried all ways and YouTube and can't get subtitles. 
Oh, I don't know how to turn it on YouTube. That's the three dots are on Facebook. So that's actually a good question, Cheryl. Where are you watching from? Are you watching from YouTube or are you watching on Facebook? Because we are live <laughs> in a few places. I can't see your comments. So might be you might be watching from YouTube. I try to include everybody and read out as many comments and push as many comments as I get to the production. So in in fact, it doesn't really matter where you're watching from. With YouTube, we can get a little bit better quality picture than with Facebook. Facebook is like brutal. They really like reduce the quality of your picture and they pixelate it because there were so many people on the platform at the same time. And it's especially a day like today, <laughs> there's so many people are at home that um, on the internet. So Facebook is definitely making the picture quality less than what it should be so in youtube we got a little bit more control over it so sometimes it's worth to watch it on youtube because you get a better quality picture but it's just up to you but watch it wherever you want to watch it you want to watch it on facebook we are live on twitter as well you can watch it on twitter all the places We are taking the, the world by one beat at a time. <laughs> I always say that. Some people are taking the world by one day at a time. We're taking it by one beat at a time. Right, I'm going to add just a few more and then I'm going to go and show you how to do the ends. Yes, it builds up really, really quickly. I only got an inch or so to do, or so, done so far, but like, you know, I'm chatting and I'm showing and like, I'm showing your comments and chatting with you. But if I just sat there and did it, it would build up quite quickly. That's what I love about it as well. And you don't need to step up. So when you're doing some other spiral stitches, like, netting or selenium or any of the any of the other ones you do need to step up you go around and then you need to step up with russian spiral there is no stepping up i for me russian spiral is probably the easiest spiral stitches and and my favorite one as well oh olivia sent me, uh, some stars as well olivia thank you so much i'm really really appreciated And I'm just going through these. Oh, I'll, I, I, I thank you. It's, it's so nice to, it's, it's so, so nice to, like us, I guess, creators, like coming and showing you in live. And I really do feel so loved when I get likes on the video because that shows me that people like what I'm doing. I really do feel loved when people send me stars because it's just like, like, you know, it's, it's like buying somebody a, a coffee sort of thing. That's how it's like a tip. That's, that's how I, I sort of think about it. But that sort of shows me that people appreciate me and Somewhere down the line, maybe it's like what I'm doing is I'm doing the right thing and showing the right projects for you. So every single like on video is, is really appreciated. Shows me that you like the content, what I'm doing. And sometimes I do look up videos that if they have more likes on them, like people like that type of um, stitch or that material I use and I try to design more with that material or that stitch or that particular particular type of bead or perhaps color sometimes it's color as well and uh, Minnie's asking why is my spiral a little bit floppy so your spiral is floppy because you're not holding on to as a tight tension so if I I am a really tight beader anytime and I'm a tight knitter, I'm a tight crocheter, I'm, I'm like, I really like to hold on to my work. And in some cases, this being a tight stitcher really pays off because you can have like, I can do a beautiful Russian spiral, but in other places where you would have to stitch loosely, <laughs> I'm not so great. So this is a way to hold on to your work by holding on to your working thread 
butting it against your work, holding it between your thumb and your index finger. So it's nice. So when I'm this, look what happens when I'm pulling this thread through. And if I didn't have my holding my thread there, when I'm pulling this through, and I'm the other thing is people pull up. So when you're pulling up, if I'm pulling up, I'm loosening my thread. You need to pull alongside. So you need to pull alongside because that way you're not loosening the thread path in your beadwork. And also, there is another way, like if once I got something to hold on to, which I got an inch or so here, I usually change the direction and I hold my beadwork. So I don't hold it um, like tight with my finger anymore like this. I hold it between my index finger and thumb and I wrap my working thread around my spare fingers here and then I can come down and I can go through my beads I need to go through and as I'm pulling it through I'm only going to let this go just right at the end and I turn it again and I'm holding it down and I'm picking up my next lot of beads so there is plenty of different ways to hold your beadwork and hold your thread down depending on which one is the best suited for you or the best comfortable for you use that one but bear in mind i do go backwards and forwards holding my beadwork in different ways because <laughs> but us beaders like you know we can sit there and we can sit there a whole afternoon we can sit there a whole evening we can sit there a whole day just doing beadwork and just doing beading and if you're doing the same stitch over and over again which is like repetitive is really great and very enjoyable thing to do but what actually happens and i i do get aches in my neck i get aches in my fingers because we are holding our beadwork exactly the same way for like four hours a, a day so if i had my finger and um, let me just zoom out a little bit so if i had my hand on the table like that holding my beadwork for four five six hours i'm gonna get cramps in my hand here because i'm constantly holding and squeezing that beadwork together to really like you know hold it tight and have a nice tension in my beadwork so i often i hold it like that for a while and then i go back i hold it like this and you know all sorts of different ways but move around with your beadwork and if you like most of us have got smartphones now or like we got better not say her name because she's going to turn on you know the electronic device what you can call her <laughs> oh, google has got as well so the google one would be like hey google tell me this and or hey google tell me that we got we got the amazon kind one i don't want to say your name but um set a, set an alarm so when you sit down beating just say, say to your phone or device or, or a, a clock or anywhere set alarm for 50 minutes and then 50 minutes later stand up go and stretch your leg for 10 minutes and and this is you know move your neck around do like I'm, I'm not saying like you know you need to do a <laughs> workout and do exercises but just change your position how you are working and how you are beating and that will help you with a lot of lot of aches that for me because <laughs> i haven't got the luxury to be able to stop for 10 minutes every hour i got my table here this is a electronic table and i can take it up and then I can, take, I can take the table itself down. And by just taking my table up or down a couple of inches, I do change my position because when my table comes up, I'm more sitting up. And when my table, table goes down, I guess I hunch over a little bit over it, but I change my position all the time. So my table would be going up and down <laughs> probably a bit, I don't know, a few times a day. And since I had this, since I had this table, I get less neck aches. And I used to get really, really terrible neck aches that my neck would seize up. And I'm just, I can't use it. Like, you know, I can't look to the left or I can't look to the right. And you just think you like woke up funny and you like slept on the wrong side of the bed or that sort of thing. But it's not. It is because like I was doing beading for a couple of days and I was sitting in the same position repetitively doing the same thing over and over again so 
do go, <laughs> do go and change position time to time. Ruth is saying I need a table. It is fantastic. It is really, really good. I'm so happy with it. So my one is from Ikea and, um, and I'm so glad I got it. I'm really, really glad. I love it. I love it so much. And I also, what I did with the table, because it comes with little feet, I unscrewed the feet and I just got sort of wheels to match the thread on the, uh, on the bolts underneath it from Amazon. And I just put, and I put the wheels on so I can wheel my table around as well. So that I think that's another great thing what you could have if you can wheel your table around because depending on like you know if you need more light if it's a bit more of a duller day you might want to wheel your table more towards the window so you can have more light because that's the other thing what I realized by beading over you know a long time now that my eyesight is not as what it was 20 years ago when I guess when I first started I did I, when I first started I did I need to find it I don't know where it's gone but I did do something in size 24 beads they were like special beads and you had to use a needle it was like I'm not joking it was like as thin as my hair like really really thin and the whole the whole thing come together. I think it came from somewhere America, and I can't even remember what was the brand. And I, you can't buy it anymore. Anyhow, but it was like such a small bead, and even size fifteens we think they are smaller. And I looked at, like I, I didn't. I, I looked at it. I found it like when we were moving about five years ago, and I, I packed it away somewhere again. But anyway, I looked at these beads, and I thought, think, oh, blind me, these have got so much smaller. <laughs> in the last few years and it's not the beads got smaller it's my eyesight so light is really really i got a couple of inches now <laughs> do tell me to stop because i'm just ramble on right one thing i need to show you when you're doing spiral stitches and you're going around and round and round and round what happens is as you like turning your beadwork all the time your thread will get like twisted up so every so often do stop, hold your needle up just like that. I like to hold actually not my needle, but the thread right underneath my needle. So I'm not putting a strain on the thread there. And I holding this thread with one hand, I'm going to take my other hand, my index finger and thumb, hold it between my fingers and just pull this through. And when I'm pulling this through, you will see when we get down to the bottom, can you see that this untwisting? And what happens if you don't untwist this, that's when knots going to come about and it's going to go funny and it's going to be harder to do what you do. So every so often, just untwist your thread so you can have, you can have a nice, nice works there. Right, I am, I'm really just going to do a couple more and I'll show you how to add end. I could sit here and just sort of chat and <laughs> and just do beading all day but I don't want to bore you all day I'm just going to add a few more and um, we're going to get started with the clasp now you could use all sorts of different clasps I love the magnetic clasp because they give me like I, I will show you a couple of things with the magnetic clasp, what you can actually do. They are really, really great because you could create bracelets. And because we have got magnetic clasp, actually, let me zoom out a little bit and I can talk you through it now. So you can make a bracelet with a magnetic clasp. And I haven't got my extender. Let me have a look if it's in that little tray. And I'll show you on the other side and I'll show you, I'm going to show you all the different um, types as well. What is it upstairs? In my, am I the upstairs in my jewellery drawer? So I made a little extender. No, it's not here. I think it's upstairs. I made a little extender with my, with my beads and another magnetic clasp. So what I can actually do is to have a bracelet which I can wear as a bracelet anytime and then 
one if I want to wear this as a necklace what I need to do is to have that bracelet and then I make an extender out of just a single strand of pearls I'm going to add the magnetic clasp on the end of these pearls on both ends and because they're magnetic clasp they will connect up with each other so very easily I got an interchangeable jewelry here that I can wear it as a necklace or I can wear it as a bracelet all together so that just one of the things what you could do if you did that I probably would you can make so many different colors of the bracelets I would probably do the back part a neutral color or I would do the back part the same color as the clasp so it sort of blends into it Alona is saying my feet and ankles swell if I sit for more than an hour same thing standing still yeah I'm, I'm like that as well so when we go like when we fly to China and I'm on the plane for 12 hours I mean I, I have to take like kind of almost like flip-flops with me or something where my feet can expand because my feet swell up so much that I can't actually put it back in the in the shoe anymore or shall I was saying Fabio, Fabio Slider, yes, you can you can try all sorts of different things out with it. And um, that's why I love. So having bracelets is great because I'm more of a bracelet girl. <laughs> uh, I very rarely wear necklaces, but I can. And I'm going to add another one onto the top of this. I can connect up. No, I don't end. One magnet is positive and the other one is negative. So if you imagine if this was just a single strand you could um, that would be your extender but if you make one bracelet and you make one necklace that's the other thing you could do oh, I got I got a pink necklace here so I got a pink necklace here I can wear a bracelet and necklace together as a set and what if I wanted a longer necklace I could just add the bracelet wrong end again and the necklace together and then I have a longer necklace let me just show you let me just show you what's the difference here so then you can have a longer necklace as well you can wear the bracelet part at the back of it or you can wear the bracelet part at the front of it as well you could do whatever you like otherwise the necklace is obviously a necklace size and I like I like them I like them very both I like them very like just like this or like like them wearing it longer as well but because of the magnetic class they are so great you can do so loads of different things with it right let's do the class because otherwise I'm going to chat here all day <laughs> and um, I'm sure you got things to do today just just sit here and just talk to me um, the the pearls are four millimeter crystals are four millimeter and the see these are size 11 to her Love the colorway versus yes, this the, I love these called the colorway. It, it works. Let's so like Kimberly saying yes, mine too. When I go to see my daughter in Singapore or go to Hong Kong, yes, I, I can't do long flights. Like well, I can't. I do long flights, but I have to take a getting off the plane shoe. And Simon always laughs at me, but I, there is nothing I can do. And then like you know, just get on with it. I suppose the first time when the uh, first couple of times when we went I wasn't really aware of that and like I had blisters galore <laughs> oh really is saying very happy to sit here and be along oh bless you oh better than houseworks yeah that I need to go and sort as Sue's saying better than houseworks I need to go and sort that a couple of plants behind me I didn't um I, I didn't I, I didn't finish planting everything last night because by the time I finished my live it was like half past seven it wasn't really cold outside so I need to go and I got four six I got six plants to replant today right when we get to the end what we really want to do we're gonna turn our tubular into a single point where we can add the clasp on there there's various different ways to add the clasp and I got that. No, I did. I did that on a different stitch. Um, you can have a choice of your clasp, whatever you want to add on. You don't have to add the magnetic clasp on it. I love magnetic clasp because they're so versatile. 
you could add a lobster glass, you could add a toggle glass, you would have to make it this part a little bit longer with the toggle to be able to work, but you could add all sorts of different clasps onto it. I'm going to show you how to add the magnetic glass, but if you have a different one, then just replace it. So we need to turn our beadwork, we need to pull this into a single point. So on my next round, instead of picking up um, the seed beads and the pearls, I'm just going to pick up the seed beads. So I'm just going to pick up three seed beads and go through the next three. I'm going to pick up another three seed beads, go through the next three. Same as we were doing, I'm just not picking up the crystal or the pearl. Another three seed beads and go through the next three. So I'm missing this, I'm missing three and I'm going to go through these three. And I pull this tight. You can see when you look at it from above, the circumference is smaller than we did before. Now we're going to repeat this again, but I'm going to only pick up two seed beads this time. So I'm picking up two. I'm going to miss three, go to the next three, and pull this up. I'm not holding my end down. Pull this up nice and tight. So anytime, if your beadwork get loose, I should have showed this to you earlier, if your beadwork get loose, always just step back one and I'm just going to pull on those two seed beads, which will tighten up the connection there and then pull my tail up. I'm going to pick up another two seed beads. I'm going to miss this three and go to the next three. Pull this up nice and tight. I'm going to pick up another two seed beads. I'm going to miss this three and go to the last three and pull this up nice and tight. So again, can you see our circle is got even smaller? Let me go around it. There we go. And next step, I'm going to repeat it again, but this time I'm only picking up one seed bead. I'm missing two, going through the next two. Picking up another one and all the way around. I'm pointing them, just pulling them in more and more each time I go. And I'm going to, once I'm going through the last bead, I'm going to pull this up. What I want to do next, can you see we got these three seed beads we just added. I'm going to go through once more without adding any seed beads. I'm going to go through these three seed beads just to sew them together, just to secure them together, just to create that point of my beading, my beadwork. And that's it. We created that lovely point to our beadwork there. Now the next things to do is we need to add the clasp onto it. So when I'm coming out of that seed bead, ever so easy <laughs> to do, when I'm coming out of that seed bead, I'm just going to go through a loop on the clasp and I'm going to loop around and go through that seed bead again. Just the same seed bead that was coming around. Then I'm going to step ahead one. And then I'm going to come back through the loop of the clasp again. Now, I like to sew the loop of the clasp probably about, I don't know, six, seven, eight, even ten times. Just keep going around, backwards and forwards, sewing your clasp, sewing, sewing, it to your, sewing your beads to your clasp. And I, it's quite important. I'm jump backwards and forwards, like even once when I've gone around, I will just keep going around until my thread path either fills the beads so I can't take my needle through anymore or I went around a few times. So think about it. This is your weakest point in your jewelry and this is where you're going to tug the most all the time when you are, when you are making your jewelry. So... I'm just keep going backwards and forwards through that loop, just going through the bead, just reinforcing it. And once I think I had enough, 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to follow my thread path back towards my beadwork and I'm reinforcing all these seed beads what I added. And once we finish this, I'm just going to show you very quickly how to restart on the other end and travel. Let's come through this class one more time and travel the other way. There we go. And then I'm just going to go through the seed beads, spiraling back down towards my crystals, just reinforcing the thread path here. Could you put a memory wire through the middle to make a bangle no fastening? Yes, you could. You could sort of all do all sorts of different things because it's a tubular stitch. So you could either put something like, like a, a, a um, I wanted to say resin, but it's not resin. <laughs> Like a rubber tubing, that's that's the word, like a rubber tubing or a cotton cord or anything like that you can put in the middle. And you could add magnetic clasp on that as well, gluing ones, so it would like totally disappear. Now once I got down to the beads, I just keep going. I just want to reinforce this last half an inch really, when I'm going to be tugging the most on my necklace. And once... You have reinforced it. You're just going to do a couple of one thread knots. So I'm just going to show you one how to do it. And then we move on to the other side. So a one thread knot. I'm going to go under my loop. So I haven't gone through any of the beads. I've just gone under my, uh, my loop. And I'm going to pull this through. Now before I pull it through completely, there is this little loop forming. And I'm going to take my needle through this little loop. Make sure you don't get caught up with the clasp. And then when I pull this nice and tight, just pull it in between the bead. When I pull this nice and tight, can you see the little knot is forming on the top of my existing thread? And I'm just gonna take it through again. Make sure it doesn't get caught up. My one just did. There we go. And pull this through. That's it. So work from the other end is you're gonna take off more thread from your bobbin. I'm gonna take an upper of a couple of arm spam here and I'm gonna add another needle on the top of it. Where my needle's gone. There we go. And quite simply, you remember the way how we started. So we started with three seed beads, then the pearl, then six seed beads, then the pearl, then six seed beads and the crystal. So that was really important to start that way. Because now when I turn around, you have got the perfect base to continue your beadwork that way. So I'm quite simply, I'm just going to pick up three seed beads. I'm going to pick up the crystal because that's right in front of me. Miss the crystals, the three seed beads and go through the next three just like that. And pull this up nice and tight. Again, I'm going to pick up three seed beads. I'm going to pick up the pearl. And I'm going to go through the next three just like that. Very, very easy. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to go through anywhere. I just started. I just picked up. I just put my needle on the thread and I just started beading the same way I, I would be beading on the other side. The only thing is going to be different is that you're picking up. So in this side, you picked up your, you went sort of, you picked up your dark one, light one crystals. And in this, on the other side, you're going to be picking up the opposite order. So in one side, we pick dark one, light one, crystal. And then, and over and over again, we picked up the same pattern. When we're beading on one side. And here, this time around, you're going to pick up the opposite. So you're going to start with crystal, then dark one, then light one. Crystal, then dark one, then light one. But that's the only difference when you switch sides that how you're picking them up but overall they're going to look exactly the same so they're not going to be 
anything changing there and that is really how much is that now it's naturally stretchy this that this stitch and i'm just going to show you the other samples very quickly and just give give us a bit more space let's get these out of the way so what we done before so the first ever one i did was with bugle beads and i loved these so so much because they look really really delicate so here you're picking up one delica one bugle and just go through the next one really really you know nice and delicate stitch and i use a smaller magnetic cluster as well so this is about six seven mil once it's finished and this one is more maybe about 12 mil once it's finished so it's a different size let me just keep those ones in there now i also made one with three millimeter crystals that's probably about eight nine millimeter in size again same stitch you're gonna have to alter your seed beads so you are picking up less and the numbers how you go about and my one was my favorite I can't say this is my favorite because anything I do it's always the favorite one is the one I'm I'm making so this one is doing seed beads and bugle beads so here all three sides have bugle beads here only one side have bugle bead and this one is a really naturally stretchy bracelet so not the stretchy stitch so with, by doing this and that's with a elastic cord right in the middle pulling our stitch tight i really do love it but if you don't have it pulled tight if you make it into a necklace it's more more of a tubular stitch so you could do but this one like have a look how much i can pull it together and how much um if you don't like the difference is probably about I don't know that that's about eight inches and when I push it together that's about five inches so that that's the stretchiest one I I made so far but all of the versions what we made before exactly the same stitch just by using different size of beads picking up different size of seed beads makes it look very very different Oh, I have to show make them. Is that this that this one lovely? We do need to revisit this once because um, you, when you join this together, the beginning and the end, you so you you want to join it. Probably this one showing up better. You want to join it that there is no beginning or end to this. And when we did it last time, I did it with these darker ones and didn't come up very well on the camera. So we do need to redo this one some point. I'll, I'll plan it in and we will have a little play. But you can make in all sorts of different colors, these ones as well. Are the are are these patterns for each one of those ones different? Yes, they are. You're picking up different number of seed beads. The technique is the same, but you're picking up different number of seed beads for in different number of um, crystals or pearls for each one of those. They are slightly different so it's like baking a cake like you can make a victoria sponge and then you can make a chocolate cake it's going to be slightly different ingredients in there but in any way you're going to end up with cake our designs are different the lovely sarah is saying i really want to try russian spiral three so russian spiral three is this one this one was number one this is number two this is number three well, let's show you, show you that one and this is number four and i've been playing <laughs> i don't know where it is it's not in not not in this tray here but um there may be maybe I'm, i might come up with something different but i love it very easy really nice for beginners you know you, you could do as much or as little as you want with the stitch really nice to do and you could do so many different colors different textures i love this one look i lo really do love this color this is one of my favorite this twilight twilight colors you can do many but like i'm just going to bring this in and show you look there is so much samples i got for so many different colors like so much beading but i love it and often i start out like this just to make little samples little snippets 
this is probably about just a couple of inches just to make um just to test the color and if i'm happy with the color then i either keep going or if i'm not happy with the color and then i just cut the ends off and keep it as a little snippet so later on i can go back and look 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 them all up so i hope you enjoyed this video and i i really encourage you to have a go at it whichever you want to have a go boost put a picture send me a picture like text me a picture on messenger i put a picture in one of the um well, Clary Singh is that number five yet? Yeah, maybe number five be coming. Mm, don't know. Yeah, you have to wait to find it out. Oh, Diane is saying, I love the spirals. I love the spiral stitches as well. Could you do the stitch with just seed beads to make a spiral chain? Yes, you could. So you don't have to have a larger bead in between. You could do so many different things. But have a go. Have, have a little go. And, um, oh, so they're saying, please show to do the six, they, they are not six millimeter bugles then, they're nine millimeter bugles. Um, we could do it six millimeter bugles, I guess. I could have a look. Oh, Sarah's asking, when are you doing resin again? So I was, I didn't realize when I said I'm going to do the resin like Saturday just gone, but um, I didn't realize it was Easter weekend when I said to do it. So I'm going to do Creation Station next weekend. So I need to set my um my things in resin so i'm probably going to be a play with that next weekend right my lovelies have a lovely easter monday great sort of lovely girls so thank you so go and check them out on the website and don't forget to add the voucher codes that if you are checking it out on the website because um that finishing today and I'm just going to very quickly look this up here that I don't want to tell you the wrong code this morning. No, 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 hold on. Right, let's me the, so, okay. Um, if you spend £15, you get a selection of free crystal beads, which is you have to put free F R E E 15 in your checkout basket to get the free crystal beads you get three strands and um, i i have chosen actually the strands and one of them is like a nice springy purple pink and green to create something with it if you spend 30 pan you get 10 percent off your order and you have to put the voucher code free 30 in your basket the checkout if you spend 60 pan you get 20 percent off of your order and you have to put free F R double E 60 at the checkout um, to get your to, to, to get 20% off of your order. So any of your things you buy today, depending on how much you spend or how much you want to spend, you get either the free beads or you get the well you get free beads and 10% and you get free free beads and 20% if you spend more so do have a check have a look on the website right everybody have a happy lovely easter and i'll be back tomorrow and we're just gonna be keep on playing and keep on bleeding but not bleeding i'm tongue-tied now i need a coffee i think i need to go i actually need to go and have some breakfast i haven't had any breakfast yesterday we will keep on beading <laughs> tomorrow bye everybody take care Stay safe, everybody.